I'm sorry, I'm kind of in a hurry. I've got the cub in pieces trying to get ADSB out installed before the deadline next week. Not. Cub didn't have an electrical system when it left the factory 80 years ago, and it probably never will have one. So I'm exempt. But you, you might not be so lucky. After next Wednesday, that's January 1st, 2020, airplanes with electrical systems will have to have ADSB out if pilots want to fly into such winter garden spots as Peoria, Illinois, or the Cedar Rapids Beer Summit. And technically, the regulation says after January 1st, so it's really January 2nd, midnight local time. So you didn't do it, right? You just kept putting it off, and now the witching hour has arrived. Now what? Well, you're not alone, at least not entirely. No one really knows exactly how many airplanes were ADSB out candidates in the first place, but FlightAware has been tracking equipage rates for several years. As of last month, that was November, they said 88% of tracked airplanes had ADSB out. But they're not tracking everything that flies, so who knows how many airplanes don't have ADSB. If you're one of them, let's go over your options. Of course, one of those is to get ADSB out installed, but don't expect to get it done next week or even next month. We checked with half a dozen avionics shops, and they told us the backlog is typically two to six months. So if you're going to do it, get on someone's calendar like today, unless you're not going to do it at all. And some owners aren't, and maybe that's not such a bad thing. So as of next Thursday, where can you fly an airplane not equipped with ADSB out? The answers are found in the scintillating bedtime reading of CFR 91225. It's a relatively new regulation. And unless you were sleeping during your last flight review, this is going to sound kind of familiar. Let's start at the top. To fly in Class A airspace, that's above 18,000 feet, you need ADSB out but not just any ADSB out. Flying in that airspace requires the so-called extended squitter, ADSB operating on 1090 megahertz, not the other kind, the universal access transceiver on 978 megahertz. So don't even try it if you don't have the right box. Slumming our way downward into Indian country, to fly between 10,000 feet MSL and 18,000 feet, you also need ADSB out. Either kind will do. There's an exception here. If you're above 10,000 feet, but within 2,500 feet of the ground, you can skip having ADSB out. Have a nice trip over the Rockies. Flying into Class B or Class C airspace, you're going to need ADSB. That includes flying under the shelves of the overlying airspace or flying above the Class B and Class C areas. Class B airports have a 30-mile ring. You'll remember that as the mode C veil it's surface to 10,000 feet. Yeah, you gotta have ADSB out to fly in there too. Now, more exceptions. If the airplane never had an electrical system, like my old Cub, you don't need ADSB out to fly under the Class B and C shells and in a 30 mile ring, which is a lucky thing for me because the Tampa ring isn't that far away, even if I need a fuel stop and a half a day to get to it. These exceptions also apply to balloons and gliders. Although my cub gets wheezy above 1,000 feet, the exception applies as high as 17,999 feet, right up to the base of Class A airspace. ADSB out, not needed. That may seem a little silly, but some gliders do that sort of thing all the time. You cannot, however, overtop Class B or Class C in non-electrical airplanes. How about Class D airspace? Those are airports with plain vanilla control towers. They're the last vestige of rugged individualism and freedom from stifling government overreach. No ADSB out required for flights in Class D airspace. However, there are some twists. Some Class D airports are under Class B airspace, so right, you need ADSB out to fly there, unless the airplane qualifies for the non-electric exception. Beverly, Massachusetts is one example. A few of these Class D airports live in Class B cutout areas. That's no help. Yeah, you can sneak in there without a Class B clearance, but you're in the 30-mile ring, so ADSB out is still required. 
But these three Class D airports in Connecticut that I used to fly out of, no ADSB out required. Now on to IFR flight plans. Surely ADSB out is required to file and fly an IFR flight plan, right? Nope. Unless you're flying into Class A or Class B airport or above 10,000 feet. You can file and fly IFR all day without ADSB out. And that turns out to be a lot of airspace. But what if you have an emergency? Can you duck into, say, a Class B airport? Sure you can. Your emergency authority trumps any equipment requirement, including ADSB out. One more exception, and you can use it to bail the airplane out from the previous scenario. You can ask the FAA for one-time permission to fly into rural airspace without ADSB. Just go to this website and fill out the forms. They email back the permission, or at least that's how it's supposed to work. Don't think of this as a practical way to avoid equipping because it isn't. And the FAA has been clear about two things. One, it won't give these permissions over the phone. And two, not over ATC frequencies to airborne aircraft either. So if you want a few laughs, log on to ATC.com next Thursday and listen to how many pilots say, oh, is that today? I must have missed it. It's not like we haven't published a gazillion stories about ADSB, and of course this, which gets us to what happens if you blunder into rural airspace without ADSB out. What's the FAA going to do about that enforcement-wise? We don't know yet, but I'm sure they'll come up with something. Okay, so here's the don't need no stinking ADSB out checklist. No flight above 10,000 feet, no flight in Class B or Class C, including Mode C veils, no flight in Class A airspace, and no flying under the shells. So that's it, all tied up neatly with a bow the week of Christmas, right? Well, not exactly. These guys have a non-electrical system airplane based at a Class C airport, El Paso, Texas. They've got a battery-powered transponder and they petitioned the FAA to allow them to switch off the battery-powered ADSB once they've cleared the rural airspace and to save battery power. Good idea. Then they'd switch it back on to come home. Hey, works for me. But you know the FAA is going to use the brother rule. If I let you do this, your brother is going to want to do it. I never got that, but then I don't have a brother. For AvWeb, I'm Paul Bertarelli reporting. Don't say we didn't warn you about all this stuff. And Merry Christmas.